Hi, my name's Stephanie Turner, and I'm the founder of Texas Against Fentanyl. I lost my 19-year-old son to fentanyl poisoning. I think it's really important that we understand that as a nation, we're not tracking fentanyl deaths correctly. We need a COVID-like response, the amount of deaths, and there's no information coming from the top, and I would like to see that and improve. Well, th thank you for that, and I'm sorry to hear um, about your son. Um, I think you're probably right that, there, that there's probably more that's going on. And I think one of the really dangerous things about the fentanyl is people can go and, and, and use something that, you know, they maybe shouldn't be doing, but that would not typically be fatal. But if it's laced with fentanyl, all of a sudden, you know, they could die. Uh, so we have to have an accurate accounting. Clearly, it's the number one cause of death anyway, you count it for sure but it's likely much more than that. I also would say, in terms of how we're gonna uh, approach this, yes, cartel, supply, Florida, we did huge penalties. Now, if you give to a minor and the minor dies, you're going to prison for life in the state of Florida. So we're gonna be, we're very, and we gotta do that. We gotta do that, but I don't think you can do just through supply only. So what we've done in Florida is a couple things. One. Uh, try to reduce the demand. And what my wife, the First Lady of Florida, has done is she's done a campaign in schools called Your Facts, the Future, and she's educating high school kids about the dangers of substance abuse, but particularly drug use, with an emphasis on how, you know, this is not like it was 40, 50 years ago with these street drugs. Not that it was good then, but now you never know, uh, and it just takes a little bit of fentanyl, and so she's educating kids. And I think it does have an impact when they see that because, you know, people don't want to want to take that risk. So, so that that message has been put out to try to reduce demand. We also have uh, uh, leaned in on treatment for people. And we've had a, a program called the Coordinated Opioid Re Recovery Network. 17 counties in Florida, we're growing it. But basically it recognizes if somebody overdoses, goes to the hospital, you know, they, they, they make it and then they just get sent out of the hospital, chances are they're going to relapse. If there's nothing else that happens, chances are they're going to relapse. And so we now have an ability to get them in an integrated program. Uh, sometimes they're getting, you know, medical, certain medical, sometimes they're getting counseling, whatever, to kind of get them so that they can cope with this. And what we found is people that have gone through that program, the relapse rate is under 10%. So that's a really big deal. So it's really a whole approach. And um, because I think some of the people that, that we've seen in Florida, you know, who've overdosed and died from fentanyl, you know, they, 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 they had an addiction, they would get off, then they would go, and, and it was always kind of topsy-turvy, and then eventually, you know, they had that fatal, fatal overdose. And so offering that, I think, support. And so from a federal perspective, you know, we are going to work to counter demand, and we are going to work to help with treatment as, in addition to the supply.